the best ways to study is to actually take every domain, determine what keywords you don't know the first time you hear about this and actually make notes of these. It's very important. For example, have you ever heard of a encryption algorithm that is using an asymmetrical algorithm which is developed by Ravesh Shamir and Edelman? No, I don't know that. However, if you hear the words RSA, which is a well-known asymmetrical encryption algorithm, yes, you would know that. So, however, it is important to understand if you don't know a word, make sure you know that and how they tie into each other. Let's look at cryptography as part of the CISSP common body of knowledge. It's one of the domains that people think is the most difficult domain to tackle due to the fact that it is theoretical in the first place and secondly also that a lot of people don't have experience, work experience, call face experience in this domain. Um, it makes things very difficult to, to crack, to attack and uh, makes it secret so it has to be difficult to actually understand the concepts around that. Within this quick overview what we'll do is look at the, some basic principles of encryption cryptography and then also focus a little bit on a data hiding technique known as steganography. To look at the domain basic objectives, these include basic cryptography concepts, we have the algorithms that we have to look at, those include things like symmetric and asymmetrical algorithms, the advantages, disadvantages of these algorithms and the applications thereof, Hashing algorithms, where they fit in, how they're used, message integrity codes, for example, the MAC at a SWIFT message in a financial organization, digital signatures, how they're used for sending emails, for example, making sure that the email is read by the correct person, non repudiation, etc. Cryptanalysis, the art of attacking algorithms and making sure they actually work as they should and that the population is large enough to make it very difficult, or time consuming and expensive to attack. And then also finally steganography, as we've mentioned, we'll touch a little bit on that. The goals of cryptography includes the following. Ensure confidentiality of sensitive information, the integrity of that information, making sure that it is delivered at the point to the correct receiver and not being altered the authenticity of communication, non-repudiation. This means that the person cannot deny that he or she has read the email if the system indicates it. And then also provides a foundation for secure access control. If you look at certain operating systems, you log into a domain, uh, you'll see RSA come up as a technology for authentication purposes. Finally, it makes the compromise too expensive or too time consuming. What we need to do before we go into a domain is to make sure that we concepts are correct, that we understand everything and we speak the same language. Now there are certain keywords that we need to understand. These include cryptography, that is the protection of sensitive information, cryptanalysis, the way we attack an algorithm or the process of attacking an algorithm, cryptology, is the study of encryption techniques. Then also there are items that are similar, means are similar. It is things like plain text or clear text, cipher text or cryptogram, that is plain text taken, encoded and we actually or we encrypt it and we get find the cipher text. The process of encoding or encrypting that is also known as encipher, encrypt or encode. The reverse of that process is decipher, decrypt or decode. We have a cryptographic algorithm which is the function to encrypt the data from plain text to ciphertext. We have a crypto system which is a complete implementation of the function and the process. A crypto variable or key it could be a password for example that encrypts and decrypts the data, which uses the secret key, and we need to think of key management. It's one of the highest risks within uh, cryptography. Also, a key, key space, that is the resultant of the algorithm, and the larger the key space, the longer the attack will be, theoretically. Let's look at basic crypto systems. We have codes, 
we have simple substitution ciphers, simple transposition ciphers, we have polyalphabetic ciphers, running key ciphers, and finally, one-time pads. Now, one-time pad is the only uncrackable encryption system. So look at that. Now, if we actually take one of those, let's take codes, for example. If you take codes, we have things like colored flags for Navy ships, where they were signaling each other from a distance. We have Morse code. Finally, Big Latin. Big Latin kids use at school. It's a way they can actually change a word by taking a consonant and putting it in front, the one at the back, and add a Y to it, for example. There's many, many ways of doing that, and they can communicate to each other, speaking fluently, and the people around them wouldn't know that. Steganography is a data hiding technique. It's not the encryption per se. However, the data packet that you would embed into audio or video files can be encrypted by an algorithm. Right. If we look at an example, and I'll show you an example quickly on, on, on an application that's freely downloadable from the internet. What we'll take is a short text file embedded into a bitmap file. This bitmap file has to be 24 bits. It can be anything 32 bit or some editors now at 64 bits. And if it's large like that, many of the information is only kept in the first significant bits. And what we'll do is actually use the least significant bits to hide some data in there. Now, if you look at a, a bitmap, you have RGB, or red, green, and blue information in every eight bits. And what steganography applications would do is take your encrypted message or your message you want to hide and take those bits and actually add it to the least significant bit of every byte. Now, you can use the last bit only or the sec to two last bits or even more. But the more you actually use, the more changes you'll see in the picture or the audio file at the end of the day. Now, if you actually look at the picture that has embedded messages, you wouldn't know that it is embedded unless the bits used are so uh, compromising to the actual image that you'll actually see some garbage coming through. Um, or if you actually have two of these pictures and you can visually look at them one to the other and you can see slight differences. Um, applications that we've seen this on the internet is a uh, website, Cult of the Dead Cow, which actually are the guys that actually developed the back orifice. They also published an application called Camera Shy. Now, Camera Shy was a plugin for a web browser that would detect if there are any images on a web page with embedded messages or other images, and Camera Shy would automatically extract this information and present it to you in whatever format. It would be able to then put uh, images that is against company policy on a website and it looks like a normal website, it's not blocked by your content management. You go through and the camera shy would actually extract those bits and bytes and actually present you with a picture which is uh, possibly um, against uh, the morals of the organization or society. Have a look at the following example. What I'll show you here, we'll take a host image file. This is a picture of the moon we've taken. We've saved it as a bitmap format. And we're going to take this secret message and embed it into that picture there using an image or an application that is available from the internet. So we can see here, uh, file is 1.83 megabytes. And uh, we're going to use a Stega image, the Delphi application. Let's open it up. We're going to encrypt the application. So we're going to say, let's grab the um file that we would like to encrypt um, that is a secret file.txt now it can be a file that is also encrypted using an, an, another algorithm so select the file to hide secret file.txt we grab that open that up which the host image which will embed that to we open that up and which is the new file that we have to create we'll call it the touched image and so on let's call it something simple like message hidden for example we save that. So what this has done is actually taken the text file and embedded it into the 24-bit bitmap file. Now, as you can see there, we've got the hidden file. We'll grab the hidden file. We'll extract the message. We'll save it as a another text file, recovered.txt. Save that one. And as you can see, the new file there 
if we actually look at that, it is exactly the message that we have encrypted. Now it's quite simple at the end of the day to actually embed these. Uh, what we saw here is we can embed it. We'll use the least significant bits, which means we don't add anything to the file. This means that the file size stays the same. The date and time stamp might not also differ. So if you look at it by visual inspection, you might not find anything wrong. How can you actually detect this? By means of a hashing function. For example, message digest 5 or MD5 or secure hash algorithms. It's a SHA-1 or, or any more of those. Now those will definitely detect any changes within the file. There's also software available to actually scan um, hard drives for forensic investigations to determine if there are any steganography techniques um, used within, within the environment. This is a very basic overview of encryption and, and actually for you to understand it's not really that difficult as, as long as you understand all the theory and you actually go into that. If you have any questions or suggestions or want to be updated with many of these little clips, please email us to the email address shown at the bottom of the screen right now and uh, practice safe hacks.